And welcome everyone. My name is Kathy Westergren. I'm the Outreach and Instruction Librarian here at Del Mar College. And I want you guys to understand that I am your resource for dual credit issues, for dual credit student resources. Uh, I would consider myself your library liaison for dual credit. I'm going to turn it over to our Dean of Learning Resources to introduce himself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cody Gregg and I'm the Dean of Learning Resources. Um, in that capacity, I'm responsible for our libraries and uh, our e-learning department, which is distance education and the Stone Writing Center uh, at Del Mar College. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, this is kind of our newest version of, uh, of our library, library symposiums. Um, the purpose of these really is for us to, to make contact with you and, and share with you our resources that we have to support our mutual students who are enrolled in dual credit. So we're really happy that uh, you all were able to join us. We hope that we can give you some really good information today that will help you and help your students connect with, with our resources, not only in the library, but throughout the college. We have <clears throat> some, some other folks from throughout the college here to, to talk with us about their resources as well. So thank you guys and welcome again. And I'm probably going to sign off now because I have been told that if I hang around events like these, it makes my staff nervous because they feel like I'm looking over their shoulder. So uh, once we finish with the introductions, I will probably log out so I don't make them nervous. My name is Hope Byer. Um, I'm the head of public services. So everything that's outpacing in all the libraries, including the Northwest Center, um, I am directly responsible for. So if you ever can't get a hold of Kathy, I'm available. Hi, I'm Lisa Meilenberg. I am the Barth uh, Campus Librarian, so I'm in the Barth Learning Resources Center located here on the Windward Campus of Del Mar College. And um, while I'm not in that direct line with dual credit, if you have any questions or you would like assistance and you would like to get a hold of someone, we the library here is open until 9, Monday through Thursday, so it's a um, place you can call. We are open on the weekends. You come see us, we can help you here as well. Call us face to face, you know, you'll get all that again through email. So, but yes, I am Lisa Mumberg. Glad to work with you too if you have any questions or need anything. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay, we're going to get started in a um, brief library portion before we um, switch over to the invited Delmar Credit, Delmar Credit partners and um, uh, e the agenda with email to people ahead of time. So hopefully everyone has that. Um, again, I forgot to send it to Hope and Cody. <laughs> um, so I am going to share my screen. I can show first of all the agenda for those who um, have that are here and don't have access to it in front of them. I'm going to go through the library portion briefly so that we can stay on schedule. I, I was able to finish it pretty early yesterday and, and we started the other the partners early. So um, this shouldn't uh, take too long. So I want to switch over to the website. So when you go to the Delmar website at the top, uh, Viking Toolbox is one way to get to the library. Um, there's links at the bottom and the, our URL is delmar.edu. It has affected a lot of us this past uh, year and a half. Uh, and that is apparent in the way we're handling our processes. And um, Lisa mentioned she's the librarian at the BART Learning Resource Center on the Windward campus. So one update to also share with you guys is that Del Mar College is um, undergoing a rebranding. If you hadn't heard about it, our formerly known as East Campus is now called the Heritage Campus. And then the uh, Windward Campus is the, the campus that was formerly known as the West Campus. And someday in the near future, we will be also opening the Oso Creek Campus on the south side of Corpus Christi. All right, so the last update I want to share with you is that Delmar College Libraries is undergoing a renovation of our white library building, which is on the Heritage Campus. And so this is why you see here on the website, you see three different phone numbers. And this is because the services on that campus had to be split up. But I want it very clear, clearly understood that the Barth Learning Resources Center is a full service library. And 
traffic can happen between campuses. And we also moved uh, an amount of uh, a significant amount of our collection or, or relevant items from the White Library Building to the Bark Learning Resources Center. Uh, these were items that Del Mar faculty let us know that they wanted available to students. And then also items that our librarians here figured out based on used usage statistics would be needed during the period of the renovation. Other items that, that didn't get moved are going to be packed up. So we wanted to make sure here at Del Mar College, our, our mission here is that student learning, part of our mission is that student learning is our highest priority. And there's already so much that dual credit students need to deal with, with getting used to the whole process of, of, of being in college, many of them in their first semester, if, if they're in their first time, like, wow, these college credit classes, they, these are harder. And sometimes they don't know even how to ask for help. And when they do, they don't they don't know where to go. So that that's the in, intent of this. So in terms of the research and library help, um, one of the, the first resources for them is Beacon. This is um, one resource that will allow them to search most of our databases and um, our card catalog, our physical um, catalog um, at the same time. Um, and so it's a great resource, but it's incredibly important for them to realize that when they're off campus, they're going to need to access Beacon using their student credentials. Um, and those credentials are the same as their web DMC, username and password, their student portal access, and dual credit students would most need to see a BMC to view their class schedule probably. Um, and then Canvas is what they use for the online courses, as many of y'all already know, and that's going to be the same username and password. And the email is Office 365, and it's the same password. And instead of just being their username, it's their username at webdmc.delmar.edu. All the students um, are on the WebDMC server. So when you get into this, you can see that there are lots of resources available, available to students, um, whether they're in the A to Z database view or the Beacon view. Um, and so when you do that, you'll have um, um, they'll, they'll have the ability to uh, download articles, save them to a, a drive. They can export items um, to, to review later print um, items. They can um, most importantly for many students is they can actually generate citations to the research. And so we highly recommend that they learn to check that work because, um, for example, in the date in the beacon searches, I've noticed that it only shows MLA um, eighth edition and the ninth edition is out now. So that's one example. But even if the edition's correct, sometimes the citation is not. So we do encourage them to check their work or or at least make sure they're doing what their professor is asking for. Um, and we have so many resources. And you can see this banner coming across Flipster. This is a great resource um, for students. And again, when they're off campus, they have to log in with their username and password, which is the same as their Canvas and Web DMC. And then I want to re um, refer to just a couple more uh, resources. We have the um, we have LibGuides that are really a wonderful thing for students. They can just like with the A to Z databases, they can actually um, kind of just scroll through and see what's available. They'll see different ones read, um, per per course like this English 1302 off campus and it'll get them uh, resources to get started on their research. Um, it's a fabulous resource. Now the um, the other thing I wanted to show off is that we actually have a specific distance learner libguide and I already have that one open right here. And so this actually reiterates what I mentioned with the username and password when they're off campus um, in order to actually access these items. And it even has for the faculty person on here, it even has resources for faculty to actually help you with your Canvas integration uh, of items. Is. So this is a fabulous live guide for students and faculty. Um, so then if you're um, also wanting to know, I, th I think it's pretty well known for those here, but maybe not so much for students. You know, a lot of times students when they're using Beacon or A to Z databases, uh, or you know some they're starting on their research ideally they're starting ahead of time and they have lots of time but a lot of times they're doing it last minute so they want an actual article or ebook or something right then and there 
to, that they can read and cite. But when they have more time for their research and we don't own the item, we have interlibrary loan requests that they can do. And we do have a request form, a different one for books and DVDs, et cetera, versus um, articles, because the articles don't take as long. And then we also have a student reserve request. And so this is a change that's been effective because of the pandemic. Um, basically, you know, and prior to it, students could come in and check out a book that their professor put on reserve for a couple hours and they could read, you know, the checkout period would usually be two, two hours and they could read a chapter. Now, if they need to fulfill this, we will actually have them do this form so we know what pages or chapter to scan. Um, and so in the case of both ILL and the student reserve request, we must have them use their student email um, because we need to make sure we're sending it to a currently attending student. Um, the last thing I, I wanted to, to discuss is the fact that at libraries, we all know this, I've, I've worked at a public library and it was especially true there, but libraries aren't just for research and checking out books and DVDs and music. They are also for so many other resources. So one of the things at Del Mar, and you can see this under our About Library, one of the things we do is we um, have uh, ID, ID cards and badges. Um, the ID cards are, uh, and Lisa could probably correct me on this if I had anything wrong, but they it'll specifically say state if they're a dual credit student. Badges are most relevant for students doing certain programs like being accepted to a health science program or maybe being in a continuing education program like certified nurse aid. And then another resource that we provide here at Delmar, and I'm sure uh, our high school librarian on the call here um, is in the same boat, is we provide computer use. Um, now, right now it's socially distant, but we have computer use. And, and then they have to log on with their Delmar credentials. And then um, we also provide study rooms. And so this is another resource for, for students. Um, now our study rooms aren't available in the East, or excuse me, the um, Heritage Campus, formerly known as East, um, but we do have them in our BARC Learning Resource Center. And right now because of COVID-19 and, um, and how Del Mar is um, handling um, our different phases of coming out of it, Right now, we're limiting the study rooms to one per, per one student per room, except for the exception of a couple that are larger that we're able to accommodate two students. Um, OK, so that is pretty much my portion. I did want to make clear that also from that library homepage under the, the same area where you see the about libraries, you can also see contacts and directory. And so that's where you can actually get my phone number from here. If you hadn't already had my email from all the emails I've sent, you can get my phone number and other people on this call should that interest you. Let's go ahead and get started with e-learning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, we are ready. Uh, my name is Janet Camps. I am the director of e-learning here at Del Mar College. And uh, we have uh, three staff members. Uh, and, and I, we make up the Office of E-Learning. And primarily we support faculty, uh, dual credit, dual credit faculty, dual credit librarians, facilitators, um, and others who are on the teaching side. Um, so certainly if any of you uh, or any embedded uh, faculty uh, have a question or you know, you're not sure what you're looking at in Canvas perhaps, um, then you can, you can give us a call. Um, but sometimes we get do get calls from students, and uh, we while we don't primarily support students uh, directly, we will not turn a student away. <laughs> and so um, we may not be able to help them, but we can call around and see who they need to talk to and how and how that how their issue may be resolved. So um, that's something that that um, you know it's always nice when students call. Um, but again, uh, our primary focus is on the teaching side of things. Um, one thing I do, uh, I would like to point out is that we uh, have a separate reporting uh, chain of command than information technology does. Um, and so we are, we are completely separate. So the Office of E-Learning is completely separate from information technology. So um, IT takes care of things such as um, passwords or um, maybe a student gets into their uh, Canvas course and for some reason, you know, one of their grades is not showing up. Um, that 
may be an issue for e-learning, but it may also be one for IT. Sometimes there's some overlap, uh, but typically what we what we will do is we will uh, tell them to get to IT, and then we will see from there it could be an instructor difficulty. So, so sometimes there is some overlap, uh, but pretty much for IT, they deal with technical issues and uh, things like passwords, uh, password resets, that is. And uh, the Office of e-learning, we typically deal with them um, matters of teaching uh, and how to use Canvas, um, maybe one or two of the tools that are, uh, they're integrated with Canvas. But that's what we do primarily in, in e-learning. So if you if you have questions um, or somebody is relatively new, whether it's student, faculty, and they're not sure what they're looking at, um, they're getting the Canvas, they're like, okay, now what? I, I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, we, can, we can kind of help them out. We uh, do have some, links and uh, I'm going to finish right now but I'm also going to put some links uh, in a couple of minutes in the chat and it will have information how to contact the Office of e-learning um, also how to contact IT keep in mind that IT is separate from e-learning and it'll just be there for your reference you can come back and, and copy and paste that into a document for your reference thank you Janet and I'd like to share real quick that um, one of the follow ups that I'll be sending everyone is a contact sheet that I, I made created with um, a chance for all of the DMC um, partners that are on today uh, to give me feedback if I needed to update anything. So it'll be one place where you have contact info on that sheet. So look for that in an email following the, um, this week sometime. Good morning, everyone. My name is Margo Sorrell, and I'm with the Stone Writing Center. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about us, a little bit of history and what we do. So here's our uh, URL. It's super easy to remember, delmar.edu slash SWC. And uh, we've actually been around since 1976. And what is so unique about our program is that our tutors all have a minimum of bachelor's degrees. Many of them have master's degrees and probably the most uh, uh, supporting aspect of our program is that we are not a third party resource. We are local. So students uh, that work with us are working with tutors that are actually there on our campus. We provide one on one writing instruction in our goal is really to help students become stronger writers and help them strengthen their writing skills. So some of, you know, our tutoring program is in Canvas. And so the beauty of that is that students can access our program 24 seven. So go to SWC uh, online at delmar.edu slash SWC. Students can click the link that says online tutoring and then they'll use their canvas credentials to log in and uh, they can either enroll or just go to their dashboard once they've already enrolled it'll be added to their to their list and they can access that 24 7. so we notice that we have students that will submit at 11 p.m., midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., all throughout the night sometimes. And our tutors many times work, uh, you know, they work flexible schedules. Uh, and so a lot of times we have tutors that are online at that time and they're working with students. So uh, students have 24 7 access and so they can submit at any time. And we typically have anywhere from a 48 to 72 hour turnaround, depending on the volume. Sometimes we have 24 to 48 hours. And uh, like I said, you know, students can access that at any time. If they're having problems accessing our program, they can always call Ask a Writing Tutor at 698-1364. And that came, uh, is something that kind of came out of the stay at home orders when we, uh, last spring 2020, um, we noticed that a lot of students really just needed one, one just touch, uh, just, to, you know, to have a touchstone to listen to somebody, you know, to actually have someone answer the phone. And so we started this program, Ask a Writing Tutor, and it really is just to answer quick questions and uh, to make sure they are uh, able to submit their work in Canvas. And like um, 
the director of e-learning uh, was saying, Janet Camp, sometimes we get calls from people that were just trying to look for someone that could direct them to financial aid or someone that could direct them to, um, you know, the chef uh, program on the Windward campus. And so we were able to kind of uh, help them find the information they need because they really just wanted to hear a live voice. So we started that, but we have it still available and it's during our hours of, of availability. Uh, um, we are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. So anytime we're open, students can call. Uh, we also are hoping to launch a SWC Live program later on where students can maybe get uh, some online help enrolling in the course or looking for their feedback or finding resources or answering writing questions. So we're hoping to launch that soon and we will keep you posted on that. We also have a lot of helpful handouts online. So if you're looking for uh, APA handouts, if you're looking for, we actually still have MLA 8 available handouts, but we are working on MLA 9th edition handouts. So those will be coming soon, but just note you'll find those uh, here on our website so you can share those with your students. And once those are released, which is really soon, we'll have that available also. And I know uh, a lot of teachers are still using 8. Some may have started with 9, but uh, we have 8 and 9 is coming. Um, so that's basically our information right here. Just I'm probably going over time. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much, Margo. And by the way, just so you guys know before we switch over to them. Oh, were you going to say something else? Just some, one other quick thing. Um, I'm going to drop our URL and our phone number in the chat and um, if you have any questions, you can also uh, email us at swc at delmar.edu and I'll include that in the chat also. And I'm so glad you mentioned that before we switch over to the next uh, person from the Math Learning Center. I, um, those of us who do stick around, the, the event scheduled for an hour, but there may be some folks who are interested, have, have questions, and so we'll do that. Um, for those who do stick around, but that may not be everyone. So if we can't answer your question, we'll definitely refer you. All right, I'll turn it over to the Math Learning Center. Hi, I'm Pamela Cordova with the Math Learning Center and um, just coming from the, the tutoring center. So I'm wearing my tutoring headphones. Um, I know I look like I'm at a call center. The Math Learning Center works um, a lot like the other tutoring centers, but we're doing face-to-face um, -face tutoring now. And this is where our main center is. We are trying to, you know, social distance and stuff. So the center does look a little bit different than this picture. We are trying to mask too. So we're, you know, keep trying to keep things as safe as possible, but still helping our students. Um, our mission, main, main part of our mission is to, um, to have a collaborative and interactive process where we help the students um, succeed, but also so that they can do the math on their own and um, be independent learners. We are open on the Heritage Campus in the Coles Buildings um, CB Room 117. We um, basically don't work off appointments. St students walk in, um, they sign in, they get help, um, and we do um, recommend that our dual credit students come in. They're welcome to get tutoring with us um, as long as they're taking a Del Mar math class. Um, we're, like I said, we're following our DMC safety guidelines. Um, our hours on East Campus are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday and Saturday as well from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And um, our online tutoring is something that um, happened, you know, when the pandemic started, we needed to, to be able to assist our students. And so we um, started using a virtual meeting platform where we could do breakout rooms and um, audio and screen sharing. We write all over the student screens. The students can write too if they have that capability. We can also chat with them through the virtual meeting. So this has been really um, new and cool. The, the way the students um, will get to us online is they will go to our um, 
webpage, www.delmar.edu forward slash MLC. They'll click the Get Started Here button and it will take them to our sign in form where they'll basically enter information about their class. Um, our online hours are slightly different than our on campus hours. We start at 10 a.m. online and we go to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, we are open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, we also um, have limited hours over at the Windward campus in the Emerging Technology Building. And um, our location over there is called the Academic Learning Center, and it's a partnership between the MLC and the Stone Writing Center. And our West Campus hours are Monday through Thursday, um, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. You can find um, lots of resources in the center as well as online. Um, in the center, you can find textbooks, computers and printers. We allow um, our students to print their math or handouts, things like that. We have um, calculators they can use in the center and a ton of handouts. You can also find um, our handouts online. Our lecture videos are on our website. Our feedback survey to let us know how we're doing is on their website. Um, hours and locations, which we're constantly updating, depending on how things have been changing. And we also um, offer workshops, and you can find more information about that from our website as well. Um, this is just uh, some pictures of our team, our directors, supervisors, our tutors. Um, most of them have degrees in engineering or math related fields. Um, uh, some of them even have their masters. And then we also have um, somebody that greets you as you come in, um, whether you're coming in online or you're coming in um, to the center face to face, you're going to be greeted by our office assistant. And um, next on our agenda will be the Student Success Center. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Melissa Longoria Gunin, and I am the tutor coordinator here at the Student Success Center. At the Student Success Center, we are located on the Heritage Campus, which is the East Campus, and we are located in the St. Clair Building. Thank you for having us. This right here is a our QR code. And if you take a picture of it, or if your students take a picture of it with their cell phone, it'll go straight to our website um, where we've got lots of information. I know you're going we are all presenting so much wonderful information, but um, hopefully if you've got that, that'll take you straight to the website where um, you don't need to remember it because you'll have access to it there. All right, so we also have a uh, peer tutoring here at our center. Uh, students, your students can work with one of our tutors one on one. We we are offering in person tutoring. Uh, we it's usually in the one on one or sometimes even in a small group. Um, tutors are available to assist assist students uh, with the information that they have gained from the courses that they've taken. So a lot of times this, the well not a lot of times all the times the subjects that they are tutoring are subjects they've already taken and uh, are familiar with. Um, you can, um, it's basically a walk in uh, basis, but you all, your students can call or go to our website to see if, um, you know, the hours that we're available. But we are open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5 and on Fridays from 8 to 1230. Now, I realize a lot of your students may be in school at that time, uh, but another thing we can do is um, virtual tutoring. Um, Again, if you are somebody from your office wants to call, I can schedule that with you or coordinate that with you, uh, but we can do um, virtual tutoring um, with your student there at their school and our tutors over here. Um, another thing that we also do, and this is in person and uh, virtually, it is the new TSI A2 assessment and tutoring. So some of your students may be needing to take that or prepare for the TSI A2, which is the new version of the TSI. Uh, we can prep them for that and get them ready for that test. Um, sometimes they want to try to maybe place out and um, after they've gotten their taken their first test, uh, we can help with that in both of the math and English portion. So we also have here at the Student Success Center a success coach. His name is Blas Ibanez, and Blas works with students on self-advocacy, goal clarification, motivation. Um, maybe they need some help with study skills. These are things that, again, your students are at school. 
they can be done virtually or even you know through a phone call if your student is more comfortable doing it that way but those are things that we can schedule and coordinate it's just a matter of giving us a call so we can get that together and uh, help your students uh, as dual credit students they do have um, you know they they are uh, welcome to all the services that Delmar uh, College offers as well as the um, services here at the Student Success Center. We also at our center have a technology resource center, which is a computer lab where we've got uh, workstations for students uh, that includes a variety of programs, printers, and of course the internet. They're able to print up things, uh, our assignments. Um, also, we've got calculators uh, that they can use while they're here. And um, sometime in the future, we will have uh, more information on a, a checkout program for laptops and calculators. Another thing I want to tell you all about um, is tutor.com 24 7 homework help. So what that is, is Del Mar College in a partnership with tutor.com does offer 24 7 homework help through tutor.com. They are a, um, a tutoring service that is available to all Del Mar students, including dual credit students that are taking Del Mar courses. Um, they, stu your students will go to tutor.com via Canvas. They must log on via Canvas um, to get to the tutor.com portal, and there's no charge for them as long as they go that way. If they do log on to tutor.com and try to navigate it themselves, um, there will be a charge for that. But the great thing about tutor.com is that, uh, again, if you've got your students that are night owls and you know do their best studying between, I don't know, 11 p.m. and 2 a.m., uh, tutor.com is a great option for them. Um, along with um, the tutoring that they offer, it also allows them to keep all the assignments and all the lectures that they've been through with tutor.com or the tutorings, I should say. It has um, an option for them to keep all of those so that if they need to go back and review, it's the re recording is there and the transcripts are also there. Um, it's a, a great tool for students that uh, that are needing help during times when maybe our services are not available to them so that they have every opportunity to uh, to be able to succeed. As you can see on the um, topics, it has covers everything from uh, foreign languages, history, math, um, Microsoft help, uh, sciences and social sciences, as well as writing and, and business. Um, they just go in, they select that, and then they select the subject and they are connected with the tutor within moments, uh, within minutes, I should say. But um, that is a, another tool that is available to them. Uh, another thing that you'll find on our website, which is delmar.edu slash SSC, is videos and study tips. These are things that we've put together in house uh, during the pandemic. Actually, uh, they're they are short and sweet and to the point video and study tips that students can watch. They're not long. They're not uh, well, at least we hope they're not boring, but they're not long that I can guarantee you. Um, but they we do have them on the note uh, Cornell note taking test anxiety, uh, learning creativity, success planning. Um, that way, if your students want to look at these just to maybe get some ideas or even uh, maybe the, this sort of spurs them to be able to reach out to the success coach, um, who, by the way, is the one who put the videos together, um, you know, that this is just a little bit of a, um, an introduction to that. And that concludes the presentation. Again, my name is Melissa and I am the tutor coordinator here at the Student Success Center. Uh, our number is 361-698-2259. I'll put that in the chat also. And then also, if you have any questions or want to send me an email, you can reach me at ssc at delmar.edu. And um, uh, thank you for letting us present today. And if you've got any questions, I'm here to help. Thank you. Thank you. And now we are going to turn it over to Disability Services once the screen share is. I don't know if you have a presentation, but. Um. My name is Brenda Garcia. I am a student disability specialist here for Delmar College. I am actually housed here at the at the Windward campus. I have to get used to that. The West Camp, the old West Campus, shall I say. Um, we do provide services for students on both East, West, 
um, Windward Heritage Oso, Future Oso, uh, the Student Development Center, the Five Points Cal Allen Center Northwest. We provide services for students um, that are attending Del Mar College, whether they're they're uh, receive, uh, taking a developmental ed courses, credit courses, non-continuing ed courses. We provide services for them. So if I can, let me begin. The Disability Services Office exists to provide students services with disabilities that allow them to access the college curricula as authorized by the American Disabilities Act of 1990. So what kind of disabilities are we looking at? So here we go. Here's some of the, the disabilities that some folks might you know, think about right off the bat, but really there's quite a few more. It's a long list. And there's so many more disabilities that we just cannot list them all here. We individualize everything for the student coming in with a particular disability and provide those accommodations that are needed. So let's move on to some stats here. OK, so the Disability Services Office actually in the year 2020 with COVID happening, everything going from face to face to online, we actually had over 500 students request accommodations just slightly below 2019 pre-COVID. That's actually pretty high of a number. So now number of courses with accommodated students enrolled. Think about this, 1,220 courses that students requested accommodations for. And that was last year when everything was on uh, going online we still had a high student population requesting court, uh, accommodations for their courses. And one of the, the number one accommodations that we provide are the extended test time for the students. Now, last year we had over 800 students request uh, proctored exams. That was last year being that they were online, virtual. Look at 2019 pre COVID. We had over a thousand. 400 students requesting exams. That's how many exams that we proctored. That's quite a bit. So our office is pretty busy with testing. OK, so advocate year 20 post semester outcome. So this is just this past year. We had um, 511. Courses taken. How many credits total? Almost 2000 credits were earned by students receiving services through our office through developmental ed courses. We had 152 courses that students were in 84 pass. That's an impressive number. If you if you just take a moment to think about that, it's that's a high number. So here we go. So there's the process. This is what I like to call the four step intake process. One, you have to have a disability diagnosis diagnosis either by your high school IEP 504 ARD or a qualified professional uh, who can provide documentation that they are seeing you for a particular disability. Two, so once we have our intake and we we meet to discuss uh, your disability and see how we can assist you, we discuss what are some of the life activity limitations? How is it affecting you in the class and so forth? And that's actually comes down to number three from what it does to you physically, mentally, um, to how it's affecting you uh, in the classroom. That's actually number three, the impact in an educational setting. And then with all that information, we then determine what's an appropriate accommodation for each student. Uh, I've always said we can have five students with ADD, but they have various levels. They might have ADD with dyslexia. ADD with this calcula. It could be um, various combinations, but we're all it's we cater to the disability um, that the student has that's sitting in front of us individually. And the next one might be slightly different, provide different accommodations. It all depends on the student and their needs. So these are two of the accommodations that uh, are provided pretty much 100% nationally. These are the, the two that pretty much everyone sees, but we have plenty more. 
just to name a few. These are just a few examples of some of the accommodations that we provide. Here is our contact information. Uh, we do have two campuses that uh, we have offices at currently, which is the Heritage Campus, formerly East Campus, or the Windward Campus, which is the West Campus. That's where I am currently. So I get to see all the students that come in for Allied Health, Welding, Police Academy, Fire Academy, Culinary Arts, and the Heritage Campus. You have your teachers, you have your engineers, uh, liberal arts, various music, athletics, kinesiology. So we have quite a few um, uh, careers that we accommodate to pretty much everybody. Uh, it, and it's whichever campus is closer to you and more importantly, whichever campus you're going to be taking the majority of your classes. And with that, I want to thank everybody for um, allowing me to present today. Thank you so much. Thank and you. our next presenter is from Retention Services. Uh, my name is Danielle Newman. I work with Retention Services. Uh, unlike my fabulous colleagues who have PowerPoints, I have a post-it, so I'm going to keep it fairly short here. So um, two, two main things that we do with Retention Services that dual credit students might um, have interactions with their office in. Um, the first one is for our Academic Recovery Program, or ARP program. Um, students involved in the ARP program um, come to see us, have to come to see us. We put a hold on their count if their GPA or their grade point average is below a 2.0. To be in good standing at Del Mar College and to graduate, you need to have a 2.0, which is a C average. So if a student falls below that, we want to talk to them a little bit about what's going on. <laughs> How can we help you do better? You know, so even though probation sounds like it's, it's big and scary, um, the purpose is to be helpful. So I think most students leave the meeting saying, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I got some help and assistance. So now I know what I need to do to get better. We talk about how to calculate GPA, what grades they need to do better. Before they come in to see us, they need to do an online assessment that gives us a snapshot of their academic strengths and areas for growth. Um, so we kind of know what to talk about and what types of resources they might need. And we'll hopefully try to connect them with some of the other resources that you, you heard today. So um, unlike most of the other offices on campus, we're we're not super preventative. We're, we're reactive, right? We're there when something's not going well. Um, that's kind of our role and what we're designed to do. Um, we don't see a lot of dual credit students on probation. I think most of it's because um, you need to have completed um, successfully, so have at least a, a passing grade in um, 12 uh, college level courses um, in order to get flagged. We realize that some people will continue to fly under the radar, but we don't have enough staff to, to close that loophole. So um, if you know of any students who are struggling academically, though, and have a low GPA, we are very, very willing to still see them. Um, so occasionally um, students might have a little bit of a, a delay in their registration because they need to see us. So it is important that students are checking their Delmar College email because we'll send them a notification um, if they have this hold on their account and they need to see us. So a lot of times with dual credit students in particular, I find that they often are not checking their Delmar College email or don't even know that it exists. So make sure your students know that it exists, because again, that's how we're going to tell them. And, and all the directions and everything that they need to do to clear that hold is on there. And again, the earlier they can do it, the better it is, because the closer we wait to that registration deadline, the more students are trying to get in and the fewer spots we have. So as you can see, that that's a challenge. Um, most of our dual credit students are probably going to interact with our office through our retention alert program or our RAP program. Um, through this program, faculty can notify us when there are students who might not be going to class, might not be turning in their homework. Maybe the student talks to them about something that's concerning, they're homeless, or, or there's something else going on at home or a non-academic issue that's um, getting in the way of our academics. So. Uh, the fact that they can let us know that what's going on and we'll reach out to the student. I'm going to call them. I'm going to email them. Um, if I'm not hearing back and they're taking classes on campus, I'm going to go see them before or after class <laughs> to check in to see how they're doing and what they need. And we're going to try contacting a student for two weeks. If we can't catch them after two weeks, we will close the case and we will move on. Um, but occasionally um, with dual credit students, we might not, again, they're not checking their email. We might not have an active phone number for them. Um, if I can't get a hold of them after about a week or so, I will reach out to our early college programs uh, staff and ask them to work with high school staff to connect with them, to encourage them to contact us again. And that's just so we 
can help them. You know, we're not scary. Um, it's just meant to um, provide some resources and support when something is not going well. So most of our dual credit students that I see tend to be through that retention alert program when the professor tells me that they're not doing their homework or attending class or, or something's just not, not coming together. And so um, we'll do what we can to try to connect them to resources on campus or off campus. Um, if it's a little bit more of a larger issue, like, you know, um, food insecurity in the home or something like that. I know with dual credit students, a little bit different. It's different than our traditional students because they're often, you know, depending on their parents, right? Um, we have provided resources for the family in addition to um, just the students. So um, again, we try to connect with them to figure out what's going on and see how we can help them. And so uh, that's what we do in retention services. Um, by the way, students can seek us out if they want to. Um, again, but most of our students are going to be flagged through that retention alert program by faculty, or they're going to have that hold on their account to come to us to talk about um, improving their GPA. And so that's what we do. Thanks so much, Danielle. Appreciate it. Now we have our last speaker from early college, also known as dual credit. And my name is Bob Montes. I'm the director for our early college dual credit program. So I know many of you uh, probably, if you're a counselor or facilitator, you've probably seen me. Uh, we did help host a couple of uh, trainings this past couple of months. Um, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. You heard a lot of different things uh, this morning that covers how you can uh, you can help the students uh, navigate through their early college uh, or through their dual credit class. Um, where I'm trying to share my screen. Give me a second. I'm going to share my screen with you. And if someone uh, maybe Kathleen, can you give me a thumbs up that if you have yeah. experience? Right. OK, well, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. Some of you all maybe have heard this. I'm not going to take up much time as well. Again, you heard a lot of good information here. Um, so first of all, I always like to go about what is dual credit. Again, it's for students to get college credit, to get them college readiness, not only the academic side, but actually getting them acclimated to the college world where it'd be like how to communicate with an instructor, how to follow a deadline, adhere to the guidelines of, of what it is to be a college student. So there's the academic side, and then there's also the other maturity side of how to how to advocate for themselves. Um, so that's kind of like what, what dual credit students, and it's, it's trying to get in them a jump start of their college career. We have over this semester, uh, we fell a little bit short on our enrollment. We have about 2,500 students enrolled in the fall semester. Typically, it's closer to about a 3,000 for the fall, 3,000 for the spring semester. So we have a lot of students taking courses. And typically, right now, I think it was 2,500 students enrolled in about 4,400 courses. So that's a lot of courses. About a third of that, uh, about actually, excuse me, about 50% of that uh, enrollment is actually students who are taking classes online. So that's a huge, huge, huge. And that was even before the pandemic. We had about 50%, 51% of students taking online courses. So we have students that go from as far as out to Pleasanton, down to, to Falfurias, all over and in between the coastal bend area. So they're not able to come into the campus to do utilize a lot of resources. So we see a lot of the things that you heard today, Math Learning Center, Retention, Stone Writing Center, the library, there are online components that we wish to partner up with you as your ISD partner to help us promote that to the students because we want them to be successful into their course. And we know that it doesn't, it's just, just not taking the classes and doing their assignments. It's actually doing that extra work and getting that assistance. Sometimes we don't know if a student is struggling until after the fact the semester is over. So when we have these conversations and we did have a conversation where I asked a student one time, so what had happened? You know, uh, why did you get the D or why did you get the F? You know, and they were like, well, I didn't even know what I was doing. So like, why are you telling us now? You should have told us before so this way we could have gotten your get the help. So we understand. So sometimes because they're a younger student that they may be a little bit shy. That's where we get the advocating. Tell them you need to go and ask us. Let us know what we what what's what's going on. So this way we can get you in contact. We can get the student in contact with one of these wonderful resources that are here on our campus. And again, it doesn't have to be just uh, face to face. We have a lot of the online component. So I know that sometimes we have sometimes parents or sometimes they'll say, well, they're just high school students. Well, that's kind of like a cop out answer. 
You know, they're college students. They choose to swim in our pond. They're going to have to abide by the policies, rules, and regulations of the college. Yeah, we want to guide them. We're not just going to say like, oh, you're too bad, too sad. You're once you're in your class, you know, you're on your own. We're there to help you. I have coordinators. I have five coordinators that go out to each and uh, each of the uh, your high schools to help you navigate. So, if counselors on there. You know who those, those assignment uh, students are, or coordinators are. If not, I could send you that PowerPoint. Facilitators, we did the training. The librarians, you need those uh, contact information. Those people are at your school as well. So, utilize those individuals. So, we want to make sure again that utilizing these online resources is very important. You all play an important role into the students' uh, dual credit uh, uh, world, I guess, because we're having to have them bring in a college world into a high school world. That's very difficult to do because we know that they're there, you know, from maybe eight to four or nine to four thirty or something like that. So they're there and they're having to try to navigate a college world in there. That's pretty difficult. So I, I applaud these students that try try to do this, and we want to make sure, but we don't want to hinder that. We want to make sure they're doing being successful because it does have some implications later on. Some students just like, eh, I don't know. I'm just going to take this class and see if I like it or not. But what we do is we have intentional advising. Every class that they take has to be intentional to what it is for high school, but also what it is is their intended degree path. Because these students, they sometimes they just say, I'm taking college credit. OK, so but the question needs to be, are you taking college credit to just to take college credit or you're taking college credit toward your degree path? Those are two different things because we want to make sure because they can have some financial aid implications or they say, well, I'm just going to get a D. Don't worry about it. It factors in, you know, so we want to make sure that these students utilize those resources. Again, I can't emphasize enough of how we need your help to promote that information. Some of you guys might be in early college high school. Maybe you're a P-TECH school. Maybe you're a T-STEM school. So those are the ones where you're designated to the state says we're going to do this type of course. These students are going to get a certificate or degree by the time they graduate high school. If you're just a regular uh, district or school that just says we just want to get them some dual credit classes, maybe to the 42 hour core. But some of you all have designated to TEA. That those are benchmarks that you have to meet. So having them utilize these resources, having them do all this information is a real critical piece for them to be successful in the course. So, you know, again, if you need anything from my office, you need anything from any of the individuals that you hear today, you know, I know we threw a lot of information at you, but please, please, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone give us a call you know some of you all that i said mentioned early college high schools or ptex you do summer bridge programs where um you have to kind of get your new cohort of students in there um sometimes some schools will call call us can we do a, Del a delmar college night or uh, excuse me a delmar college day uh i know some of the resources have says yeah we'll go out there do a little spiel to the students let them know our resources we want to be out there we want to be out there in your schools if you want us to do a little bit more promotion of what the services are, please invite us. We will go out there. I know that we're opening up a little bit. I know uh, uh, post um, or pre pandemic, it was kind of like we were in there, but now it's kind of like, OK, we're selective of who we can bring on campus. Um, then again, you know, we, we can work with you to do that. We have a lot of those school students that are coming on campus and utilize the face to face, you know, so we push them to to navigate that to navigate that route so if you need anything again the message again we have a whole bunch of online students you are kind of like you have a, a key role into their success of their dual credit courses is to kind of push help us push those resources because all those individuals that spoke today they have a passion for what they do they love it they're great at their jobs you know some students will come to me and says i don't i uh, you know, I'm having a problem with math. Well, I wasn't a math major. I mean, I took a couple of courses, but you might want to go over to the to the math learning center or how to write things like that. So go to the Stone Writing Center. So utilize those, especially if you if you know in the disability services, this is something that we're really trying to push. If that there is a student who has accommodations at the high school, they still need to make the accommodations. I think uh, I don't know if they this Brenda had talked about that. 
But again, remind those students that just because they have accommodations at the high school, they still need to make it. Instructors do not know any type of accommodations unless they meet with them. So that's a really critical part and giving those students that extra time or whatever it is, uh, the accommodation that they need. So if you, you see a student that's there, you know, recommend them, you know, to talk to them. Again, we can't force them. We just recommend to say what we have out there. If you need flyers taken out to your schools or anything like that, my coordinators go out there. Um, I told the other yesterday's uh, session, I told all the individuals who were speaking that if we need to go out there and drop some flyers off, so this way a student can just some brochures or whatever, we can do that as well. So just let us know what you need. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you so much, Bob. And if you want, well, like just say a couple of closing remarks, you could maybe try pulling up your school list and then sharing that if you want to try that. Um, I just wanted to tie this all together real quick, everyone. I just wanted to, sh uh, if, you'll, if you did notice that I did paste um, an evaluation in the chat. Some of you may have noticed and I'll, I'll paste it again in a little bit. Um, and so this is a link for you to give us feedback on how we're doing. But I just wanted to say that in case I forgot it again in a moment. So I just wanted to, you know, I was really appreciative, especially of, of all of y'all, but especially of what Bob said here just now, because it it's really important. I, I, everyone that was invited today, it, we had two librarians and we had two Del Mar College instructors, and we were supposed to have a counselor, but there were technical difficulties for him. Um, but it, it, we've invited librarians, instructors, high school counselors, and early college um, directors, coordinators, as well as Del Mar College instructors who teach dual credit and, and the facilitators. We've invited these four different populations because what is the thing that we all have in common? We are all purveyors of, of information. We're all here to help these students, whether it is that they need to figure out what disability accommodation they uh, process they need to go through, or you know, what the heck, why do I have a hold for probation? Um, what, what's this about? Or, or um, you know, a faculty noticing that a student has not been doing um, the work. And, and I actually was very curious. Um, I, I know that full-time faculty, uh, for example, would have the ability for the retention alert. It, I forget what RAP stands for, Danielle, I apologize, but the retention alert program um, is available for faculty in WebDMC, but I'm not yes. entirely sure if adjunct faculty have access. But these are these are good things to, to be aware of, that there's all these resources. And so we're tying it all together by having us all on the same page. And, and please be on the lookout for a, a follow up email for me. If for some reason you weren't able to do the survey today, um, it'll be linked in the email along with the PowerPoints and that contact list I promised you as well as some library information because we have a library brochure with um, services um, uh, to, for dual credit students and then also bookmarks that you could print and I'm happy to bring these materials to your schools um, as they allow.